don't give up. Don't lose heart or don't grow weary. Maybe you need to just sit and breathe, taking things one inch at a time, one breath at a time, one step at a time. But don't give up whatever it is you're doing today. You're not worth the giving up on. You've got to stick with it. You're worth so much more than giving up. Don't give up. Go slow. Go steady. Stay strong. Maybe it's one of those seasons where you're just slowly growing and that's okay, but you will come out stronger in the long run. Just don't quit. I'm Jan. This is 316 Yoga. This is Piper. That's Bonnie. And we are here to do yoga with you. It's a one hour long practice. Every day we practice live, start to finish. No cuts, no edits, no nothing. It's all just real like a real class. And in today's class, like I said, it's a one hour long practice. And today it's going to be all on the ground. You're going to need a couple yoga blocks, a strap, or maybe, you know, a belt to your robe, whatever you got handy. And we're going to stay all down on the ground today. That's what we typically do on Wednesdays. Other days of the week, some days we do a vinyasa practice, some days we do restorative, other days we do yoga combined with Pilates and bar and sculpt. So you make this practice work for you. Word I'd like you to think about as you practice is this, it's grounded, grounded, staying grounded. Grounded means down to earth, means solid, it means rooted, it means supported. But don't let that be confused with stagnant or not growing or just uh, unmoving. You know, you can be still, but you're still growing and you're still moving. I think that's sometimes hard for some people to get in a yoga practice when it goes slowly, they think, oh, nothing's happening here, but lots of things are happening. Because yoga is said to be the union of your body, your mind, and your soul. So it all comes together. That's why we take a stress number. So why don't you do that now? Take a stress number on a scale of one to five, one to 10. How are you feeling stress-wise? Remember that number, we'll do our yoga, and then we'll take the stress number again at the end. It's just kind of a little quantifiable measure for you to see how the yoga is working for you. Okay, you got your props? You got your stress number? Know that you don't wanna hurt. If anything hurts, back out of it. Do what's right for your body. Nobody's looking, nobody is monitoring you, nobody is telling you what to do. You do what feels good for you, and that's it. First pose we're gonna come into today is a child's pose. All right, Piper, move. Okay, so you got your props. Maybe have some water nearby too. And your blocks. Let's come into a child's pose. Let's take a classic child's pose for just a moment. To do that, bring your knees together, big toes touch, hips back to your heels. You can have a block at the top of your mat. Sink your hips back to your heels. Maybe you've got a towel underneath your knees because that might feel more comfortable. And then we're gonna bring our chest on down toward the earth. Uh, this isn't real comfortable, so maybe I'll just slip a block down here to rest my forehead on, or maybe I rest my chest on it, well, however it works for you. Arms down by your sides, palms face up. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Just let the outside crazy world go. This is your time on your mat, a time for you to restore, a time for you to just focus inward and a time to just be, not do. Breathe in, breathe out, let it go. Soften in your shoulders. Let your head be heavy on your mat or your block. Big breaths, sigh it out a few times. Ah, <sighs> let it go. When you're ready and comfortable, you can close your lips and breathe in and out of your nose. This will allow you to focus inward as you build heat in your body. Let's take this classic child's pose to a wide-legged child's pose. So that block, if you're using it, scoot it on up to the top of your mat, spread your knees wide, but still keep your big toes together. Sink your hips back to your heels. You can place that block underneath your forehead, <clears throat> or don't use a block at all. Press the block up toward the top of the mat if you'd like. And before you put your hands on it, if that feels good for you, you can do that in just a second, but I wanna do a little bit of a side bend here. So rest your forehead on your mat. Lips are closed, you're breathing deeply in and out of your nose. 
Maybe your hands, think of them as like little spiders. Spider walk your fingers to the top right corner of your mat. So feel a little bit of a stretch here on your left side body. Spider walk your fingers back to the midline and then just take a breath here, big breath in and big breath out as your belly button goes back towards your navel or as your belly button goes back towards your spine, sink your hips back even more. Fingers now walk to the top left corner of your mat. And when you're ready, hands walk back to the midline of your body. Turn your head a little bit from left to right to massage your forehead into your block or your mat. If you have a block at the top of your mat and you want to rest your hands on it, go ahead and do that. Now your arms can be a little bent or nice and straight. You do what's comfortable for you. Arms are extended, you can push your hands a little more into the mat or the block. Sending your tailbone down a little bit more. And always come back to your breath. It should be deep, not shallow. If your breath does become shallow, it means you're probably working too hard. And you'll want to back out of the pose a little bit. This is your child's pose. Come back to it anytime you like in your practice or maybe stay right here. Know that good things are happening. Your spine is lengthening. If your arms are reaching forward, you got a nice little stretch going on in the armpits. Knees are getting a nice stretch. Quads are feeling good and so are your ankles. Spine is long. Your breath is deep. It's a good place to be. I'm gonna come out of this child's pose now and I'm gonna come on up and I'm going to come into a toes pose. So come on up to a standing on your knees position. You can use your block or no block at all, you decide. I'm gonna tuck my toes towards my shins and I'm gonna have a seat on the block. All right, it's intense, right? It is intense. If it hurts, if there's pain, hinge forward a little bit you know, don't put so much intensity into it. The more you bring your shoulders back, the more intense it's going to be. Hands to prayer center. Or if you want a little preview of what's coming for our shoulders, because we're going to do that thread the needle pose, you could bring your hands behind your back. Reach your hands toward opposite elbows. And rest here. Just breathe. Send your breath to your toes. Just find space in the feet. Letting the feet be nice and stretched out as we work our foundation. Shoulders are soft and away from the ears. Hands could always be at prayer center. That's a great place to be. And maybe you tell yourself something positive about yourself here and, and a moment of gratitude. Breathe in and soften as you breathe out. Rest into the toes. Take the stretch a little deeper. As you're ready, when you're ready, let's hinge forward a little bit. Remove the block if you used it. Come to sitting on the tops of your feet. So place the tops of your feet on your mat as your toes go back to the bottom of your mat and then have a seat here. So you're stretching your foot in the opposite direction. You can use your blocks or you can just use your hands. Lean on back a little or a lot. Let your knees come up, but keep the knees together and sit on the tops of your feet. Hands however you like, maybe you try to close your eyes. That's a little bit of a challenge. 
It's always fine for the hands to be down on the mat or on your blocks as your blocks can bring the ground up to you. Just stretch your ankles here. A nice full complement of a pose. Think about the ankles, that full range of motion from toes pose to ankle pose. And let's do a similar pose for our spines when we do cat cow. So let's come on out of your ankle pose. Put your hands down on your mat. Lift your feet up. Squeeze and scrunch your toes. Circle your ankles in every direction. And then tap the tops of your feet out on your mat. You are now in a neutral tabletop. Shoulders are over your wrists. Hips are over your knees. Press firmly into the ground through widespread fingers. Press the tops of your feet into the ground. Lengthen through your spine. Big breath in, big breath out. Let's do our cat cow. So we're gonna move our neck now from our chin to our chest as we tuck the chin under and the tailbone under for cat pose. Then we're gonna take a big inhale and let the crown of the head and the tailbone lift to the sky. So you're curving your spine in the shape of a letter C in one direction. And then you're flipping it into the shape of a letter C in the other direction. You got that? So go ahead and continue with your cat cow. Feels good in the low back, feels good in the neck. Getting that nice full stretch in the neck and in the spine. We're gonna move the spine laterally in a few minutes too when we do that crossover of the leg in this cat cow pose. Then we're gonna do cat pulling its tail to challenge us even more. All right, so continue with your cat cow. It's important to do the cat part when you're exhaling and hollowing out your belly. And then the cow part when your belly's full and the crown of the head and the tailbone lift. So continue with your cat cow if that is really speaking to you today. What I'm gonna do now is cat pulling its tail. So I'm gonna begin by stretching my right leg, lengthening it, and placing the ball of the right foot at the bottom of my mat. I'm just gonna kinda wiggle into this because it feels good. And just stretch out the calf, the Achilles tendon. Breathe here. Stretch it out like you're a runner at a starting line of a race. Lift the leg up, knee to about hip height, perhaps bend the knee, and kind of like kick yourself in the bottom. Extend the leg again, reach and cross the right leg over the left, squeeze high in your upper inner thighs. Look over your left shoulder as you look back to the foot, which is down on the ground, but the right foot is on the left side of your body. So look back to your ankle, maybe look to your knee or maybe to your bottom. That foot that's on the ground, sweep it around, keeping your contact with the ground. Plant the foot at about hip height if that's comfortable for you. And then lift your right arm on up to the sky. Look up to your right arm. So again, working on twisting that neck. We had the neck in our cat cow go chin to chest. Now we got the neck going to the right and to the left. Plant the hand down. Bring the foot back to meet the, uh, the knee to meet the other knee. Send the right leg long, lift it on up nice and straight, pulse it a little bit on up, bend the right knee, push into the earth and reach your left hand around and grab your right foot as it crosses the midline of your body. Press into your hand and your foot that are on the ground. Look to the left side of your mat, look to the left side of your room, look over your left shoulder as you kick hard into that hand. Maybe you look up to the sky. Release the leg. Hands come down, knee comes down. You're back to your neutral tabletop. Extend your left leg. Push the ball of the foot into the ground. Stretch it out here. Find length in that leg. Just kind of wiggle into it. Let it feel good. That's what you're here for. You want your yoga to feel good in your body. You want to stretch and lengthen your muscles. You want to find flexibility and mobility. That's what your yoga does. All right, lift the leg up, pulse it up a little bit. 
bend the knee kick yourself in the bottom a little bit nice job extend the leg again plant the ball of the foot back on the ground we're going to do the same thing on the other side left leg lifts crosses over look over your right shoulder this time look back to your foot maybe look back to your knee so this is your lateral flexion of your spine. Your spine is moving sideways. You're getting in between those intercostal muscles between the ribs. Look back to your foot or to your hip, to your bottom. Then sweep your foot around to the left side of your body. Plant the foot down. Push into your right knee and your right arm. Lift the left arm up to the sky and look up to the sky as best you can. Maybe you're looking to where the ceiling and the wall meet at the side of your room. Try to take the neck a little bit more as you try to look up to your hand. Plant the left hand down. Plant the left knee next to the right knee. There you go. Let's come back to this cat-cow pose. Tuck your chin to your chest. Even everything out. Cow pose. Let it feel good. Maybe once or twice more. As you're ready, let's do a bird dog pose. This is a little bit of a balancing pose. I know we're down on our mat, but we can still balance on our mat. Balance is so important, especially as we age. You wanna maintain it. All right, so we're gonna press into our limbs. We're going to lift our right leg and extend it long. Been here before. We're gonna draw the right toes toward the shin and lift the leg a little higher so it's nice and straight. Dial your right hip down and hold this right here. You could take a block to the top of your mat you could plant your hand on it as you press into the earth. Don't forget to press into that top of the left foot and hold here. You could lift the hand off of the block. You could send your thumb high to the sky, spreading your fingers wide and reaching in your bird dog pose. Tuck your elbow to your knee underneath your navel and then stretch it out. Elbow to knee. And if you want, you can take your left hand, capture your right knee and tuck your nose to your knee or close to it, you decide what works for you. End in a nice big stretch as you lengthen through the spine and then plant the hand and plant the knee. Adjust your tabletop so you're comfortable. Extend the left leg long. Maybe lift it a little bit higher, drawing the toes to the shin, staying nice and strong here. Dial your left hip down so both hips are equal distant to your mat. Right arm reaches for either the block for stability or reaches long to the front of the room. Your gaze is down kind of towards your left thumb because your spine is long, your neck is long. Reach and stretch, maybe elbow to knee once or twice or however long you like. Don't forget to push into that foot. Maybe you capture the knee and draw your nose to your knee or draw your knee to your nose. Stretch, finish in a strong stretch, a strong reach. Make that heel longer, make those fingertips a little bit longer, and then finish. Hand comes down, knee comes down. Guess what? Cat, cow, even everything out. Find that spinal mobility, find that spinal flexibility. All right, let's get into the hips a little bit. Let's do child's pose again. A wide-legged child's pose is where we're gonna start. Knees spread wide, big toes touch, hips back to the heels, arms reach long to the top of your mat. Breathe in, breathe out. Maybe the head comes down to a block or maybe now you can bring it down to the ground. Spine is long, body is flexible, body is warmed up. Knees spread wide, maybe spread them a little bit wider. Now you could turn 90 degrees on your mat if you want. So you can spread your knees wide and have the comfort of your mat beneath your knees. Arms reach, knees spread wide, hips back toward the heels. Feels really good to press hard into your hands here. Knees spread good and wide, this is your tadpole pose. So those muscles inside your thighs, your adductor muscles are getting a nice deep stretch here. I'm gonna spread my legs a little further apart and rest the head down here on a block or the mat. All right, tadpole turns into a frog. If you'd like, the only difference is right now your toes are touching or close to each other. 
You're gonna work the feet away a little bit, working your shins a little more parallel to the sides of your mat. Right about now is when I wish I had a towel underneath my knees. So you decide how it works for you. Sink the hips back, enjoy that big deep stretch. As long as it's not painful, stick with it. Breathe through the discomfort, you got it. This is your tadpole pose, your full frog pose. When you're ready, bring your hands underneath your shoulders. Work your knees in a little bit. I'm just gonna work them in so they're on the mat. Bring the big toes to touch, walk the hands forward a little bit. Hinge the weight forward so you feel more weight in your arms. Keep your elbows hugged in and then just put a little bend in your elbows and come on down. I'm gonna move my knees back a little bit, arms a little more forward so I can keep my back a little straighter. Lengthen up here, bend the elbows, bring the chest toward the earth, and then press the earth away. A few of those, kind of little frog push-ups. Strengthen the upper body, you got it. Chest toward the earth, then straighten the arms and come on up. One or two, five or 10, whatever is comfortable for you right now. When you're ready, sink the hips back one more time in that wide-legged child's pose. Arms reach long, forehead, chest, come down to the earth. Just surrender here, whatever feels good. All right, let's come out of it. Or maybe you decide to stay in it longer, it's up to you. I'm gonna do that thread the needle pose for the shoulders. Okay, so come to your uh, neutral tabletop. Maybe use a block for this one. In your neutral tabletop, send your right arm up to the sky, kind of like when, what we did with our cat cow pose. Send your arm up to the sky and then thread that right arm underneath like it's a needle being threaded, or like it's thread going through a needle. Place your shoulder onto your block or place your shoulder down to the ground. The right arm is gonna reach for the left side of your room and your left arm is gonna reach high to the top of your mat. Now adjust your hips. Everybody's hips are different. Everybody's height is different. Everybody's femur length is different. Adjust so you're comfortable and your cheek can rest on the block or the mat and your shoulder can be down on the ground. Left fingers are reaching to the top of the mat. Breathe, stretch it out. And as you're ready, maybe slide the left hand down a little bit closer to the body. Unthread the needle, sending it high to the sky. Look up, 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 and finish. Come back to your tabletop position. Left arm goes up and you look up to that hand. Left arm comes down, threads through the right. Right arm slides up to the top. Left cheek comes down to a block or to your mat. Left hand is across the midline of the body. Palm is face up. Right arm is reaching long and strong to the top of the mat. Shoulder is down. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. When you're ready, if you're ready, slide the right hand down a little bit closer to the body. Unthread the needle here, sending the left arm up, up, up to the sky. Place the left hand and right hand down together. Now come onto your belly. We're gonna really get into the shoulders here. All right, so that was a thread the needle pose. Let's do a broken wing pose. So tee out your left arm. Right arm is bent, right hand is under your collarbone. Roll onto your left hip. As you roll on to the left hip, feel the intensity in that left shoulder. Right hand, like an elevator, push it, push into it if you want more intensity or ease, on, ease off of it if you want less. Left arm is teed out, hand to about shoulder height, or maybe not, maybe you've got it lower, or maybe you've actually got a bend in the elbow. You do what's right for you. Legs can be long and together on your mat. A Little bit of a fetal position with a bend in the knees if that feels better. Top leg for me with the left arm extended. The right leg is on top. 
I'm gonna bend the knee, bring the sole of the foot onto the mat, and press into that foot. Driving the knee more up toward the sky to intensify the pose. You could take that right leg, plant it behind the extended leg and have the sole of the foot on the ground behind the leg. Finish up, roll onto your belly, enjoy the getting there. Roll onto your belly and take it to the other side. Right arm tease out or a little bend in it. Lower it a little bit. You go to where it feels right for you. Roll onto your right hip. The left hand is gonna bend. That's your elevator. Legs, however you like. Long, a little bit of a fetal position. Top leg, left leg can be bent. Sole of the foot can be on the earth in front of the extended leg or on the back of the extended leg. Press into the earth. Lift the knee maybe higher. Breathe and enjoy the intensity of this stretch in the shoulder. As you're ready, come back to your starting position. Roll onto your belly. Both hands now going up into a seal pose. Press on up through extended arms and grab a seat. All right, you're not going to be here long. Maybe you grab a drink. We're going to do our one-minute plank. We do that just about every day. We do a one-minute plank. I'm going to set a timer, and you can time yourself or don't time yourself. It's up to you. Plank, lots of ways you can do it. You can lie completely on your back, send your hands up to the sky, and imagine that you're in a plank position with the ground, with the roof, the sky, the ceiling. That's it, the ceiling being like your ground. You could take that frog-like push-up, remember that? Neutral tabletop, knees slightly spread, hinge forward into your arms and hold it here while still on the knees. You could send your legs a little bit longer, staying on the knees, bringing your forearms down to your mat, elbows over or under your shoulders, pressing into the ground. You can stay here on your knees, think of your back as long. You could tuck your toes under, send your hips up and hold a dolphin plank or you can take a high plank, which is what I'm gonna do. All right, I'm gonna have straight arms, my shoulders are gonna be over my wrists, and my legs are gonna be long. Let's set a timer, and we'll go for one minute. Go ahead and start the timer, please. There we go, one minute in your plank pose. Back is nice and straight, pressing into the hands, shoulders over wrists, everything feels tight and strong and really holding on here. You got it, your spine is long, Lengthen it, you did bird dog, you're good. We're already 40, uh, 15 seconds in. Push into the earth, stay here, hold here. Alignment is important, keep those arms nice and straight. Keep your belly drawn in, keep your navel tight and strong towards your spine. Breathe, lengthen through your spine. 20 seconds to go. Take a break if you want by sending your tailbone high to the sky. There's your downward facing dog pose, that's convenient. You could also drop to your knees if you like and then get back in the game when you're ready. For the last 10 seconds, if you're timing, hold it, lengthen, strengthen. You're better than this, you can do it. Hold on for the last three, two, one second, hold it and then come on down to your knees. All right, most excellent. You did it, you did your plank your way. I'm not gonna say you did a one minute plank, I'm not gonna say you did a high plank. You do whatever variation is right for you. Whatever is right for you is right for you. All right, great pose, pentacle pose, let's do it. A resetting, realigning pose. You're on your mat, you're on your bottom, legs go long, heels toward the edges of your mat, arms go high overhead, capital letter X shape. <laughs> Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Hold on in your pentacle pose. Ah, let it feel good, let it feel refreshing. You deserve it after your fabulous plank. All right, now we're gonna come up to seated and we're gonna do a wide leg forward fold. But here's the deal. You're in pentacle now, how do you wanna get up? Think about how you want to get up. Using your hands is fine. Using no hands is fine too, but just be aware of what you're doing. I'm gonna take my arms, I'm gonna lift on up and have a seat. 
Legs spread wide. Bring your blocks between your legs. Blocks between your legs, take this wide-legged forward fold. Maybe you hinge forward. Your blocks can be at whatever height is comfortable for you. Place your forearms on your block. Place your forehead on your block. Soften in the shoulders. And breathe. Maybe decrease the height of the block. We're not going to stay here long. We'll stay here long tomorrow. So check out our practice tomorrow. It's a restorative practice. In a restorative practice, we'll have maybe five or six poses that you will hold longer. This will be one of them. This is a really great pose because you start out with your blocks stacked up and then as time progresses and the body surrenders, you get closer and closer to the earth, but not today. We're gonna come out of this pose. All right, come out of the pose, bring your legs together and let's get back into the hips. This is pretty intense, a shoelace pose. We haven't done that for a while. I'm gonna bend one leg. I'm gonna bend it generously, and I'm gonna bring the heel of that foot kinda to my hip crease, my bottom on the opposite side. And across the opposite leg on top, bringing that heel to the other hip crease. My knees are nice and stacked, or close to it. Hands on your knees, lengthen up. That's an important part of it, lengthen up. And as you lengthen, you know, you're taking that big inhale, right? Think of finding length and space here and then I'm gonna settle in, settle in, being grounded. Being grounded doesn't mean being stagnant. It doesn't mean nothing's happening. Things are always happening underground. Think of a tree in the roots. They're always doing something. They're growing, they're spreading, they're working. Same with you. Behind the scenes, a lot's going on, especially in this pose. Big pose, big stretch on your hips. Maybe you wanna hinge forward a little bit. Maybe that feels good. Maybe you bring your nose to your knee or close to it. Maybe you use those blocks. Maybe you take a block or two and you say, today, I'm gonna just place my head on my blocks. That's what's right for me. You gotta do what's right for you. Breathe in, breathe out. This is another great pose to do in our restorative practice. Come on up, shoulders over your hips. Pretty intense, isn't it? But it's gonna feel really good in your hips. Let's unwind, remember what leg you have on top. Unwind and do just the opposite. Bring the other heel to the other hip crease. Other leg, the new leg on top. Bring that heel to that other hip crease. Knees are stacked, lengthen up. Soften in the shoulders as you exhale. Breathe in, breathe out. Stay right here if you like. Or if the legs don't feel good, you know, move them apart a little bit. Find that sweet spot between, I can totally do this, so there's a little bit of effort going on. You decide. <clears throat> you know, and it's interesting. This pose may be great for you, but another pose may be practically just insanely uncomfortable for you. Everybody's different. So listen to your body. Rest your head, perhaps, on your blocks, your knee, or sit up straight. You're kind of getting that same sensation in your hips when we do that half pigeon pose. Soften your shoulders, unclench your jaws if your teeth are touching. It may not be comfortable, but it might just be doable. And you just gotta kinda say, okay, not real comfortable. So what, let it go, let the discomfort go and just rest into the pose. Because the next pose is gonna feel really good after this. Let's come out of it, <laughs> lift your nose up off of your knees, open up your legs wide and come back to that pentacle pose. Just a brief little pentacle, legs spread wide, come on down. Soften up here, enjoy the getting here. I think the best part of this feeling is right before you lie down. Arms can be down by your sides, teed out, or the classic pentacle pose where you look like a five-pointed star. Stretch the arms out so your body looks like the letter X. Let's get back to the hips. Bend your knees. Bring the soles of your feet to touch underneath your groin. Bring your knees nice and wide open. 
Bend your elbows and bring your fingertips lightly to your temples and stay here in your goddess pose. Or, you know where this is going, or you can do a few little sit-ups here for your abs. You decide. All right, rest here in your goddess-like pose. If you'd like, on the exhale, lift your chin, bring your shoulders back down. Exhale, chin up, inhale down. Little lifts, little lowers. Maybe for you today, you're gonna pulse it. Lifting the chin up, keeping the elbows open wide, pulsing, pulsing, pulsing. Breathe. Strengthening the core. And breathe. Let's bring our shoulders down. Let's do a bicycle pose. Take the variation of bicycle that speaks to you. Maybe today you're saying, I kind of like this goddess pose. I'm going to keep my legs just like this. Totally good. I'm going to bring my knees together. I'm going to bring my knees up over my hips and my shins parallel to the sky. Fingertips slightly to the temples. Exhale up. Twist, bringing an elbow toward a knee while the other leg extends. Twist, bringing the opposite elbow to the other knee while the other leg extends. You get it. All right, there's your bicycle. You could straighten your legs and scissor kick them if you like. Always a good option. And then let's finish. Send your legs long. Send your arms high overhead. Point your toes, reach your fingers, stretch it out. Stick pose. Breathe in. Breathe out, let it go. I'm gonna find my strap. I'm gonna press on up to find it. If you have to press on up, either use your hands or lift on up. Once you're lifted, take your strap, place it under the soles of your foot and lean on back as if you're riding a horse. Trick here is to keep your elbows hugged in and don't round your shoulders. Send your shoulders back, chest is lifted, lean on back in a recliner. Lift your feet up. Hold them up, good and strong. Maybe heels reach more to the front of your room while your chest stays lifted. Find your sweet little balance here. Put a little bend in your knees if that feels better for you. Hold it here in your boat pose. Other days we do boat pose without the strap. We do lots of variations on boat pose. Ah, breathe, breathe. Soften in the shoulders, put a smile on your face, and just enjoy what you can do today. Have appreciation for what you can do. Lengthen up, and then let your heels float down. As your heels float down, walk your hands down the strap. Bring your nose towards your knees. Inhale, lengthen in the spine. Exhale, belly hollows out, nose comes closer to your knees. Finish up. Shoulders over your hips, remove your strap. Let's come on to our stomachs and work a little bit on strengthening the spine and the low back. So once on your belly, let's do Superman. Arms reach long, legs are long, tops of your feet are on your mat. Nose is down on your chin. Maybe your legs lift up or maybe you decide to do one leg at a time. Maybe the legs lift up, maybe the arms lift up and you fly like Superman. Ooh, feel the compression in the low back. Feel the strengthening here. This Superman pose, I'm going to reach long. Then I'm going to sweep my arms back for like an airplane pose. Let your fingers reach toward the pinky toes. Stretch through the shoulders. Lengthen through the shoulders. Lift through the legs and hold in your airplane. Take it back to flying Superman. Hold it. Sweep the arms back. To your airplane. Maybe lift the legs higher. Maybe lift the chest higher. Again, flying Superman. Arms sweep back, airplane. Finish. Place your hands underneath your collarbones. Let your legs come down. Take a breath in and a breath out. Press on up to your seal pose, pressing through your hands, elbows nice and straight. Breathe. Okay, let's take a wide-legged child's pose. Knees wide, hips back to your heels. All right, stay here if you want or come on out of it. Let's find our two blocks and take a fish pose. All right, we do this in a restorative practice also. It's a big chest opening pose. Two blocks, 
What you'll want to do is place your blo blocks, maybe at their medium height, or maybe you want to take the most stable grounded height. It's up to you. We're going to place the blocks like a letter T. The horizontal part, the top part of the T, is going to be a pillow for your head. The vertical bar of the T, you're going to have like the length of your neck between the two blocks, so maybe like six inches or so. And this block is going to rest between your shoulder blades. So come on to your mat. Your bottom is scooted up close to the block. You want your bottom on the mat. Use your arms here to adjust this vertical part of the T. You don't want it really low. That doesn't feel really good. You want to have it between your shoulder blades. So maybe scoot it up. You want it between those shoulder blades. The neck, you want to be able to rest on that horizontal block. All right, this is a big chest opener. Coming into it, it's like, wow, whew. But settle in. As long as you're not experiencing pain, you're gonna be all right. Arms down by your sides, palms face up. Legs can be long on your mat. Big thing is have your bottom down. I see a lot of people who wanna have their bottom lifted. Don't do that. Have your bottom down. All right, your legs can be long. Let's get the legs how you want them to be, and you can change them. Bring the soles of your feet to touch on the mat if you like that, if that feels better. That kind of alleviates some tension on your low back. You might like that. I'm gonna open up the knees to the side of the room, soles of the feet touching, kind of like a fishtail. Breathe in, breathe out. Soften in the shoulders, let it be. You might like the sensation of teeing out your arms, kind of like a snow angel. Let your arms float on up. Maybe you like how that feels. Or let them float down. Find the sweet spot where you feel like your chest is really open. Really open, allowing you to breathe so freely and easily. Soften in your eyes. And if your eye shade is within reach, you could always Cover your eyes with your towel or your eye shade. Kind of nice to block out the light. So this is a great pose for your standing posture. It's a great pose to counter that text neck posture that so many people, young and old, have these days. All right, so this is an, a sensitive movement here. You decide if you want to take it or not. Your block, everything's nice and aligned and you're comfortable and settled in and your body and your chest feels open. You could take the block that's under your head and lower the height of it. You could do that. Or you could remove the block completely and allow your neck to hang back. It's up to you and you know your neck best. You know what feels right. You know what feels good. Do that and nothing more. And there's nothing wrong with keeping the head supported. You don't wanna feel stress and strain. You want to feel good in your yoga because the most important thing is you take those little steps is to come back to your yoga. Breathe in, breathe out. Now you can stay here longer. In fact, you may make the decision to stay here in this fish pose. The only thing I'm gonna do between now and final Shavasana is that reclined figure four, getting back into the hips. If that speaks to you, join me in that. If this is the bomb, stay right here. You do what's right for you. I'm gonna roll off of these blocks I'm gonna remove the blocks. Maybe grab your hand towel. All right, I'm gonna do that reclined pigeon pose, a reclined figure four. I'm gonna get back into the hips. All right, so my knees are bent. Left sole of the foot is on the mat. I'll talk you through so you don't even have to look. You can keep your eyes closed. Lift your right leg up. Bring the outside of your right ankle onto your left thigh. The outside of the right knee, press it more to the bottom of your mat. Maybe use your hands to press your inner right thigh open. I'm gonna lift my left foot up off of the mat. I'm gonna take my hands or that little hand towel, or you could use your strap too. Place it behind your left knee, low on the hamstrings. 
and hug that left leg in. Soften your shoulders. Maybe using the towel or interlaced fingers, you move your hands to underneath the left knee, uh, under the left knee, high on the shin. Hug the knee in. Now, you're feeling the big stretch in your glutes. Let's intensify it. Draw your right toes towards your shin. The outside of the right knee, keep remember driving it to the bottom of your mat. Hug your left knee in even more. Hold it here good and tight and strong. Now your right foot, move it a couple of inches to the left. Plant the left foot down, plant the right foot down. You have the wonderful opportunity to repeat this on the other side. Right foot is planted, left leg lifts, it crosses over, there's your figure four design. Push the inner left leg open. Maybe you stay right here. Try drawing those toes closer to the shin. Stay right here if you like. Now you can lift the right leg up using your towel or your interlaced fingers. Interlace them behind the right leg, low on the hamstring. Rebend the knee, hug that knee in towards your body, and don't forget, outside of the left knee now goes toward the bottom of your mat. Hug it, squeeze it, let it feel good. Add the hands underneath the knee, high on the shin. Hug it, draw the left toes towards your shin. And here comes that firing of the little piriformis muscle. The left foot that's on top, you're gonna send it a couple of inches to the right side of your room while holding that tight squeeze. Send it a couple inches and feel it in your backside. Breathe in and breathe out. <sighs> Let the tension go. Right foot comes down, left foot comes down. Let's just take a little bridge pose to soften up the hips. Press into both feet, lifting your hips up, up, up. Lift them higher, press harder into your feet. Slowly roll your spine down, one vertebra at a time. As you're ready, send your legs long onto your mat. Find your eye shade and or your towel, or maybe even bring a blanket to the practice. Cover your eyes to block out the outside world. Arms down by your sides. Maybe a little bit of snow angel movement in the arms feels good. <clears throat> then come to tuck your shoulders under your spine. So it kind of feels <clears throat> like you felt in that fish pose, that supported fish pose on the blocks. Tuck your, tuck your wings under, tuck your shoulder blades under. Let your chest be lifted. Your feet are at the edges of the bottom of your mat. Pinky toes fall toward the edges of the earth. Remember the sensation we felt in our plank pose of everything being tight? Let's do the same thing. Squeeze your hands, fingers toward your palms. Squeeze your toes, toes toward the sole of your foot. And just tighten up here, nice tight squeeze, and feel the effects of just moving those fingers and toes into that fist and into the balls of the feet. You feel tension in the arms all the way up through your neck, tension in the legs all the way up through your glutes and in deep into your core belly. Hold it tightly. Embrace the little shake here and then release. Oh, that release feels so good. Letting everything go, softening everywhere. Do it again. Tight squeeze, tight hold. You don't want to feel this way throughout your day. You want to let everything go. Let go. Soften up, uncurl the hands, the toes, and just release and relax. Take a deep breath in. And a deep breath out. Soften the area between the eyebrows. Just breathe. Mm -hmm. 
deep breaths, just like you were taking in your fish pose. Big, full breaths in through your nose. And maybe out through your nose. Or if you prefer to sigh them out through your mouth, go for it. <sighs> Remove the tongue from the roof of your mouth. When you're ready, if you'd like, you can hit your pause button on your remote and stay in your final Shavasana longer. And then when you're ready to conclude your practice, you just hit play again and join us at this point. And then you're gonna take a deep breath in and a big sighing breath out. <sighs> Let it go. Wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes, wiggle your wrists and your ankles. Inhale, reach high overhead. Take a big good morning stretch. Point your toes to the bottom of the mat. Reach through your fingers. Take your right hand, grab your left wrist, and just give it a little pull as you allow the left arm to kind of cross the midline of the body. Stretch. Come back to the midline of your body. Take the left hand, grab the right wrist, and let that right arm cross over the midline of your body. Pull. Stretch. Come back to the midline of your body. Take that big good morning stretch again. And as you exhale, this time bend your knees and your elbows and roll into a fetal position onto one side or the other. Low arms bicep is a pillow for your head. Top shoulder relaxes away from your ears. Eyes are closed. Savor this breath because you'll never have it again. Take a deep breath in. And a big slow breath out. Stay here longer if you like. I'm gonna press on up. Remember, you press on up too. Either use your hands or don't, but just know what you're doing. Be aware of what you're doing. Come on up, maybe keep the eyes closed or open. Sit however is comfortable. Maybe your hips feel nice and comfortable now after those stretches and you sit in a different way. Maybe bring your hands to prayer center, press your thumbs into your chest. And what did we say early on? Be grateful for today. Be thankful for today. Be thankful for your body and what it does. Take a big breath in and a big breath out. Let it go and then blink your eyes open. There you go. You did it. An hour long yoga practice. How did you like it? Let me know. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Join our group. Our group is on Facebook. It's a private group. It's Friends of 316 Yoga, where I'll post articles and we can just share things. Stress number. You took it when we started. What is it now? I'm sure it's a lot lower. It feels really good. All right. So be joyful today. Be joyful always. Be thankful always. Hold on to the good and let all that other stuff go. From us to you, much love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love you guys. See you on your mats tomorrow. Move, move, move. <laughs> Bye. Good girl. You're a good girl. See ya. You're still here, and I'm really glad for that. Keep this in mind. The path is made through repetition. Keep showing up, and good things will happen. You know that. I'm glad that you're still sticking around. Tell your friends what the yoga is doing for you. Our yoga is free for anybody and everybody on Facebook and YouTube, and they can join in anytime from the privacy of their own home. Tell them about our practice, please. If you'd like to support our broadcast, you can visit our website. It's www.316yoga.com. Stay on your path. Enjoy your yoga and have a great rest of your day. See you on your mats tomorrow.